I remember as a little boy being in the presence of my parents who were older. They had me kind of older in life. And there were times that they needed to talk about something. And when a child was present, they might say something like, this is over your head. But then when they thought I was getting a little older and really could kind of peep out the dialogue that they may have been having, they would look at each other and say, it's a little cloudy right now. It was their way of saying that what we need to talk about and communicate one to another is not suitable for mixed company. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church and host of the Midweek Refill. I want to share with you in this week one of Jesus' parables that was a little bit too cloudy and a little bit above the head of a mixed crowd. It's called the parable of the lamp. I'm Bishop Littman. Stay tuned. You're watching the Midweek Refill. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I am Bishop A. Reginald Lippman, and I am truly excited to share this teaching with you. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, and do all of that good stuff. Leave a comment. Also, as always, you will find a free PDF study guide in the description box below. We have a seven-day devotional that will include a prayer as well as scriptures that we will meditate on together for the next seven days in between episodes as we talk about these wonderful parables of Jesus Christ. So please be sure to grab it along with the previous session in this series so you can avail yourself to these great, great resources. And as always, this week, we gather to delve into the sacred teachings of our Lord found in the Holy Scriptures. And today, we're going to embark on a journey through uh, probably what is a lesser known parable called the parable of the lamp. And in the parable of the lamp, you will find that it is found in Mark chapter 4, verse number 21 through verse number 25. And in this divine passage of Scripture, our Savior employs the simple yet profound teaching that we know as the parable of the lamp. It's literally, if you will, the imagery of a lamp. It's profound because it has so many truths to help us see the necessity of our lives being like a lamp as kingdom citizens of Jesus Christ. So let's take a closer look at this parable of the lamp from Mark chapter 4, verse number 21 through verse number 25. And it reads like this. Then he asked them, when someone lights a lamp, does he put a box over it or shut out the light? Of course not. The light couldn't be seen or used. A lamp is placed on a stand to shine and be useful. All that is now hidden will someday come to light. If you have ears, listen. Be sure to put into practice what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand what I tell you. To him who has shall be given. From him who has not shall be taken away. Wow. I love the passage of scripture that we have for this week's teaching. As we talk about the parable of the lamp from Mark chapter 4, verse number 21 through verse number 25. You know, our beloved teacher, Jesus Christ often graced us with his wisdom through the parables. These were heavenly narratives that were wrapped in earthly tales. And as we meditate upon 
this amazing parable of the lamp, let us really remember the tender moment that he was teaching this by the sea, where Jesus, in his infinite compassion, shared this timeless lesson with a gathered multitude. And although this would be quite familiar of an object to his listeners, Jesus would share with them something that was tremendously familiar to them because they would often be familiar with the lamp. This was how they would light their homes. This was relevant to this audience. Picture with me a scene as Jesus addresses a crowd with this familiar essential role of an oil lamp that they would use in their daily lives. And much like the light that illuminated their homes, this parable actually sheds divine light upon our souls. It reveals the eternal truths of the kingdom of God. As modern followers of Jesus Christ, we too can glean invaluable truths from this parable, and it it will guide us on our journey of faith and discipleship in today's world. Now, there are several lessons that we can learn from the parable of the lamp, and here is number one. We are to be a radiant witness. We are to be a radiant witness. Notice this, not just any type of witness, but a radiant witness, a witness whose life and light shines brightly before the world, that we may indeed represent Jesus with all that we are and all that we have. We hear Jesus talking in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16, where he says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, friends, God wants us to allow our lights to shine before a dark world so that we may be radiant witnesses for him and of him. And share our stories and our testimonies of his goodness in our lives, his work that is done within us. We must be radiant witnesses. It is an obligation. It is a responsibility. It is a privilege. It is an honor. It is our daily occupation to be radiant witnesses for Jesus Christ. But we learn not only must we be radiant witnesses of Christ, equally, we must also practice authentic living. We must practice authentic living. Family, listen, Jesus encourages us to live with authenticity and to live with transparency, understanding the hidden truths that will eventually be revealed. In fact, the scripture tells us uh, that all of the secrets will eventually be brought into the open and everything that is concealed will be brought to light and made known to all. And that is Luke chapter 8, verse number 17 from the Living Bible Translation. Because of the fact that we are warned and forearmed and really trained to know in advance that everything that is essentially done in the dark will be brought to light. Shouldn't that behoove each and every one of us to live in such a way as to portray authenticity and to live out transparency in our everyday lives? Because after all, That's what lights and lamps were used for, was to bring light, illumination, transparency, the ability to see the path that must be taken. Our role as believers in Jesus Christ is to reveal through our lives, as a lamp for Jesus, the pathways that should be taken by all of humanity. 
Another very powerful principle that I want you to see from this passage of Scripture, we also must have receptive hearts. We must have receptive hearts. Receptive hearts. Well, it's important that we embrace the wisdom of James, my dear friends, by opening our hearts to receive and actively apply God's word. And we read in the book of James, chapter number one, verse number 22, these words. And remember, it is a message to obey, referencing the word of God here, not just to listen to. If you don't obey, you are only fooling yourself. So James teaches us here that the word of God is not just for us to hear. It's not just for us to go to church to be moved by the choir or to critique the sermon or to uh, think of it in terms of uh, I'll give it a thumbs up or I'll give it a thumbs down or I enjoyed this, but I didn't like that. Who made us Simon from American Idol? It's time that we hang up our crowns that we've put on our own head and strive to live a life that fulfills the parable of the lamp. And that is to live with authenticity, to live with truth, and to be a recipient of God's word, to be a believer, and to use our ears to do what it is that God has called us to do. Remember that the key verse is, he who hath an ears to hear, let him hear. Not let him speak. <laughs> Let him hear. That leads me to our fourth point from the parable of the lamp, and that is this. We must practice generosity and stewardship. Again, we must practice generosity and stewardship. Notice this. Not we must talk about generosity, but we must practice generosity and stewardship. The word of the Lord teaches us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6 through 8. But remember this, if you give little, you will get little. A farmer who plants just a few seeds will get only a small crop. But if he plants much, he will reap much. Everyone must make up his own mind as to how much he should give. Don't force anyone to give more than he really wants to. For cheerful givers are the ones that God prizes. God is able to make it up to you by giving you everything you need and more so that there will not only be enough for your own needs, but plenty left over to give joyfully to others. And friends, when we understand our role as lamps, lamps give generously the light that others may see. Imagine a stingy lamp, a lamp that never puts out anything, a lamp that never gives anything. Well, friends, if you find a lamp that won't give, you're looking at a lamp that won't work, a lamp with very little value. Live your life as a lamp that is full of the oil of joy, the oil of the Holy Spirit, that always puts God first in everything that you do. So let's talk about some of the major takeaways that we can find in this amazing little parable. First of all, there is the call to be radiant witnesses for Christ. Radiant witness for Christ. And we talked about that. That means that we literally shine for Jesus. We, we're not seeking to be glorified. We're not seeking to be praised. We're not seeking to be honored or all of that, given the accolades, but we willingly, gladly, openly, fully, wholeheartedly give God all of the praise because we are radiant witnesses for Christ. The next major takeaway is living authentically and transparently before God and others. So living authentically and transparently before God and others means that we see it as our purpose as well as our pleasure to offer our lives to Jesus for his usage. And then thirdly, 
A third takeaway is cultivating receptive hearts to God's word. How receptive is your heart to the word of God? You know, the parables in Mark 4 are all about having a heart that's ready to receive. You see, it's only when your heart is ready to receive from God and of God's word that you then really embrace God's word and you're able to articulate God's word. Why? Because it's been put in a heart that was ready to receive God's word. And that's what God wants for your life. And then another major takeaway from this particular uh, wonderful parable of the lamp is practicing generosity and faithful stewardship. Practicing generosity and faithful stewardship. And I love this passage of scripture, this wonderful, wonderful parable called the parable of the lamp, because it helps us to really foster a real clear understanding of our purpose. Again, a lamp is not mean, meant to be seen. It's mean to put off light for others to see their way. And so it's important that we live generously, that we practice generosity, and that we also are faithful stewards of the Lord. So I want you to make sure that you grab this week's PDF handout. It's going to go in much more detail than I have the opportunity to, to do in these particular settings. These takeaways are some incredible snapshots of how God wants to use us as his lamp. You see, God wants us to live authentically and transparently before God and before others. He wants us to cultivate that receptive heart to God's word. It means everything to him that our heart is receptive of his word for our lives. And when our heart is receptive of his word, we will then practice generosity and we will practice faithful stewardship. It won't take a whole lot of pumping and priming for us to be generous in all that we do because we recognize that what we do is honoring God and everything that we do is to and for God. Well, listen, I hope, trust, and pray that you got something out of this week's study. Don't forget to go and grab the free PDF handout. It is free 99 while supplies last. I'm just joking. It's yours for the taking. Get it. Share it with someone who needs God's word and who would like to study with you and me. Don't forget, we've got some special additions to the next few uh, handouts for these studies on the parables because I've included a daily devotional for seven days that will hold you down as you start your day off with scripture and with a prayer. And so we'll literally be praying and studying the same scripture for seven days. I want you to join me. I want to challenge you to join me in the seven-day devotional challenge. You can find it all in the free PDF, which also includes great personal discovery questions. Well, this is Bishop Littman. I've so enjoyed sharing God's word with you. Please like, share, subscribe, send it to a friend, partner, neighbor, or relative, enemy if you got any, and let them know about the need to be a lamp for the Lord. Hey, until next time, you go with God.